it. The invention of Carmeling Onus. This is the machine he built. Do you know who once applied to be Carmeling Onus's student? Einstein. Albert Einstein himself. The Onus Laboratory was that famous at that time. And how did Onus and Einstein attract attention to their discoveries? They published their work. Yes, ladies and gentlemen, they wrote an article. And that, my dear scientists to be, is what is expected of us. Publish, let your voice be heard. The more publications you have, and the more important the journal in which you're published, the easier it is for you to receive funding, the better the university you work at, and the nicer you are. And then you die. But how amazing would it be if after you're dead, thousands of scientists can build upon your discovery? Because of the publish or perish mentality, we are currently facing an impossible amount of scientific articles. The well-respected The Lancet researched that a while ago, and they found that 85% of the published biomedical research is rubbish, nonsense, poppycock hot air purely published for the sake of it and which will only be read by one or maybe two others and contributes nothing to society yes what a discovery bees in the south of peru land on a leaf with a serrated edge more often than a non-serrated one and if they land there then there is 18 percent less chance of rain in the north of vietnam at the same moment if you throw in enough data and you give it a good scientific stir, you'd be a complete idiot if you don't find any correlation between something and something else. And then you're published, and your age index goes up, and that, my dear scientists of the future, is a good thing. Not for society, not, not, not for the world, but for you. But that isn't what Onus did. Onus worked for years to prove something that he knew in his heart to be true. And because it was important. And because of that, we now know more about the physics of how our world works. He was searching for knowledge, not an article, and he found it. Through passion, honest curiosity, and perseverance. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is real science. And honest is the kind of scientist you should want to be. Nowhere near finished, but you did ask for it, so. Oh, thank you. You're welcome. Nicholas. Hi. I'd like to talk to you about a delicate matter. Yes. It's about ethics. But did, did you really, really discover this yourself? In science, of course. Of course. I mean, did you really, personally, make this discovery? Last year, the executive board has indicated that they will be implementing scientific integrity as a university-wide policy. 
and that any incidences or transgressions should be dealt with immediately. Is this ingenious world-changing discovery? And perhaps it may have slipped your attention, but as an additional function, I'm the chair of the Integrity Board. And I've been authorized by the Executive Board to make decisions if dubious situations should arise. Yes. Anyhow, I'm asking you this in the strictest confidence. Yes. Did this discovery, discovery really originate from your own mind? Anyhow, would you be interested in taking over my task? It's an additional function. It won't take up a lot of your time, but I just don't have the time at the moment, and I wouldn't know who else to ask. It has to be someone with a spotless reputation, you know? Would you consider it? Yes. Yes, of course. <laughs> really? Uh, well, uh, no, I mean, yes, I'll consider it. Oh, good. Good, thanks. Thank you. Shoes. Um, that ensured I figured that I had a law or business. Yeah. Oh, look at him. Oh, he's so laid back. It's a, it's a chemist. For sure. Okay. <laughs> okay, well, that's definitely not science. Um, I, I'll go for art. What's he doing here? with escartane stink. A reliable bitch. Do you know who's unreliable? Your father. He didn't discover anything. His brilliant discovery all came from his student and he's taking all the credit for it. Do you know what my father thinks of you? He's reading your thesis and he thinks you're brilliant. By the sound of it, do you have your PhD before you know it? But... Looking at the number of young female professors, generally speaking, there's only two ways for girls like you to become professor before you're 40. 